It's uh, Tavo and Hector here from Team Breakthrough coming at you guys with a little deck analysis for uh, extra deck monarchs. Uh, I've been using the build that topped the AR, the Arlington uh, Regional uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I've been trying to see because uh, this was probably the last deck I was playing competitively before I got hit, just because I this was like what was it Ether Stormforce was just like the best combo ever stopped your opponent from playing, and uh, yeah, like now seeing that it's actually. It's not dead. It's uh, it could still come back most of the time, and it managed to take first place over uh, our teammate Noodle the Foodle. And uh, we could just go straight into how well. First of all, I'll start off by saying how I've done done with it so far. I've only been able to take this to one premier event, if you consider it. It was uh, ARD States Beaumont. Uh, there, I uh, it was just it was a small little event. I ended up uh, 16th out of like uh, what was it, like 30 people it, like the deck did not perform for me well that day like but uh, I did manage to uh, what was it when um, the Yu-Gi-Oh Monopoly thing at a local just by going undefeated that was like the best thing I've done with this deck so far just because I haven't been able to take it anywhere else but uh, just getting ready for ABCs and so so what's the purpose of this young man here oh I'm here to help my friend here explain some of the cards and combos okay. thank you yes so when I get started? Okay. <clears throat> so first of all here we have a card for card exactly what he played except for the desires. I want to play exactly 40 cards and uh, minimizes the chance of just drawing really awkward hands. Of course this is Monarchs and you can't avoid draw uh, awkward, awkward hands, hands at times. you do what you can. You play. He played <clears throat> cards that allowed him to uh, kind of break away from breaking sometimes. Just seeing, like, for this deck uh, he played I believe it was around like eight darks and so counting the go well yeah like eight nine darks just counting the gofus and they were all targets for alert and uh... just sped the deck up so much while i was playing it it helped him break so many hands like it was not many times where i drew the just the little guys and i managed to draw um, what was it a gofu and a brilliant fusion and i was still able to just make a zolkin play and zolkin play still pretty strong in today's meta and uh... Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> obviously we want to play the two alerts, but uh, we have way more than enough targets to like, we can, where we can blind alert, <clears throat> and nine times out of ten we should be drawing a dark monster regardless. So uh, we want to play double Gofu. Uh, the tokens are actually just really good in this deck in combination with Karaz because you can just pop them and uh, just draw two free cards. Uh, obviously a lot, a lot of things that uh, we notice about this deck that a lot of people uh, stop doing is they're running uh, triple primes. Uh, we don't understand why people aren't running the three of them. Like it just uh, optimizes your rank five plays. Uh, the only thing I would have to say is that I wish we played more squires. Uh, I just feel like the squires just can just keep you in the game for longer, especially now that uh, you don't have that many resources, and especially Eidos that has a uh, synergy with the uh, lures. I think the best card, like the MVP, mostly of this deck, would probably have to be this little combo here. It's like opening uh, escalation and then being able to return. With a Karaz, even into one of these, or searching for a uh, Erebus, is just like this escalation or Kai. So most of the time, is like an MVP. It's just you can give her a back row, or during your opponent's turn, or and still, if you have a return up, you could even search during your opponent's turn. It's just like Kai's was probably one of the best cards. The targeting removal, yes, but now the darker story is not so prevalent. It just makes the deck so much better. And Erebus at three still, just still, if darker story was at least at two. Airbus would still have a chance to uh, get rid of the, any threat that it made. And the triple Vanity Fiend, just, uh, it's a blowout against most uh, Pendulum decks. Especially because Metaphors are like one of the most popular decks right now. It shuts off their counters uh, and the Pendulum Summon, which is like the most prevalent thing. Uh, I guess Archfiend and Centric uh, could be like an accurate response, which is why we're playing the one uh, March of the Mon uh, Monarchs. Um, yeah, a lot of people aren't playing this either, uh, but it's actually really, just really good uh, in combination with this. <clears throat> or uh, any other monarch to be honest because it, it allows your effects to go off or even if they have solemn strike and you have a return uh, just make it so you have a body on board yeah like um, I, I'm sorry I forgot his name but uh, the guy who topped the uh, Arlington Regional really thought this deck through just because I uh, seeing like the small like the insta fusions were really clutched uh, during that um, when I took this to the ARG uh, I was able to produce a board with um, what was it Pleiades yeah, so just uh, here, just for, I had the yeah he played the dweller so had that, 
that an Erebus and one just random uh, okay. Seraph Knight. Yeah. And that board just by itself against, I was playing against a BA player. Uh, that game, yeah, I completely shut him down, so like, of course I won that <laughs> round. I just, uh, this deck also does lose a lot to some sides still, such as, um, what was it? Like, Twin Twisters just destroys this deck a lot of the time now. Just because uh, Escalation is a really great card, but it's not as good as Stormforth used to be. Like, Stormforth, if they try to MST or Twin Twister it, you could chain it and still be live for that turn. But Escalation, if you activate it and they do have uh, MST or Twin Twister, like, you do not get the summon. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> so, uh, obviously, we're playing the triple uh, Brilliant Fusions. So, hold on. So, we're playing these cards, right? So, we're playing triple Brilliant, double Instant, uh, double Gofu. And triple prime. Uh, so like I was talking about earlier with the primes, because you want to optimize your year rank five plays, and like uh, so we're playing double garnet as well. Uh, obviously drawing this can be a break, but like with the amount of rank five plays you you can um, play, uh, you should be able to make Durandal, which obviously like you used to do beforehand, and you can like shuffle your hand and you know hopefully you just unbreak this. And if you have one of these sets, it's even better because like you can shuffle one back in. And then uh, draw like a fresh uh, batch of hands and just activate your brilliant fusion and keep uh, producing uh, pluses from there. Uh, obviously, the squires are just like really good. Uh, uh, in comp, like if you open like both of them, it isn't that bad. Like you would, you still have the one play the ideas for the one ideas left in deck. And like I said, this has synergy with the Lord of Darkness. Um, yeah, only two returns uh, because most of the time people will give this to you anyways off of pantheism and uh, what's it called? And if they don't, like, what, uh, uh, 9 times out of 10, the other card you, you're trying to get is probably better than the return. Yeah, it's just, uh, Pantheism still is just, uh, bait out your opponent. Like, you have to make hard reads on what you're going to do, or pr try to predict what you're going to do uh, for the next turn. And for any changes for the deck that I, that I personally made was, I cut one of the Fiends, just because I saw myself drawing it a lot. I drew two of them a lot, even though it's a really good card and the alert target, I... Cut it for another alert target. I cut it out for the uh, Mega Kai's, because oddly enough, for the places that we've gone, like the locals that uh, we attend, some people still try to make the deck work, but not the extra deck version. They've tried to make the uh, uh, what domain version still work. And this is just to get in the against any deck and against mostly any deck now, since uh, uh, except Cosmos at sometimes it was, it was just a blowout. That's because you could uh, escalation summon this and banish two cards depending if you tributed a dark monster or not and they still take a thousand no matter what it was uh yeah so here's the extra deck right <clears throat> so um you play the so you're playing two insufficient two insufficient targets for your two insufficients uh panzer dragon is actually really just good um, like i said making rank five plays it's a light so you can make a play 80s with it uh if you open it along with the gofu it's uh it's something for your uh, soulkin um and yeah, so these are the two targets that are uh, like David plays. I don't know if he wants to explain those. Yeah, the two targets, just the basic targets that they had for this. It's just, um, was it Zulkin, of course, because that's how you bring out these two. Crystal Wing, amazing. It's a negation on board. And uh, most of the time, they have to deal with this first. And so this sometimes survived a lot of the time. And I was able to bring out Michael next turn and just get r rid of stuff. Or like, just, uh, Michael's just great spot removal. At times, I was thinking of cutting. Uh, something else in the extra for an extra target, but like these are just the best that you that that are available at the moment. You can try to bring out like a Scarlight, but Scarlight is kind of a little overkill, and the the extra deck's tight enough as it is with the Norden Dwelling play. Some people I know I saw that from the deck profile thought the Norden was a little excessive with uh, Dweller, but it's a uh, it's kind of like a what's it called like a necessary kind of combo that you need in the deck just because you're playing two Instafusions. If the Norden doesn't make you a dweller at the moment, it still can serve as tribute fodder. Like, you bring back one of the little guys, like Idea, and Idea will get this graveyard effect again when you sense it to grave if it wasn't used that turn. So, you, the dweller is a. Um, it, it's just a nice card to have just in case yeah. it comes up. Especially with the. As we're playing two of the Garnets, like I explained, it's a instant dweller or just instant of uh, the level <coughs> 2 tribute. Yeah. Level eight trivia, so. And worst comes to worst, it's just a 22 beater. Uh, some people still side restrict, so you can make this under restrict, or you can bring this out and just pop like any uh, problematic bug that your opponent might have. Um, yeah, so the Gaia Charger, obviously, to uh, slap on top of your rank 5. Uh, Pleiades is just like blow out against Burning Abyss going first. 
Uh, Durando, honestly, uh, I feel like just Durando just to like unbreak your hands. Uh, Volca, maybe that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to explain this. This one. Does in Mayo, uh, <clears throat> I, I just felt like there was most of the time that I played against people that were setting like multiple cards and were just setting one. And there were scenarios where you, they only set one, but you have to play straight into it because there's not really a card in the extra deck that I played that dealt with just one set except the. Uh, I believe, yeah, not even Adrius. It's just, this was only for floodgates. I just really was scared of, uh, most of the time when I play, I really think that my opponent has probably like a Solemn or something set, so I try my best to play around it. And if not, I make this and just bait out whatever's down there. Yeah, I understand you going back. You were going back and forth on Shark Fortress? Yeah, Shark Fortress, like, um, at first, I cut it. I felt like playing two Volcasaurus was good, was good enough to do that, and I also played... Actually, no, it was two Pleiades. I feel like two Pleiades was better instead of having the Shark Fortress. It was just the the Shark, the Shark Fortress came up way more than the Pleiades did. Just because you can only make Pleiades with the Panzer or a... Um, two Primes. Or two Primes. So, like, this came... This, as this being generic, is just a lot better. Mm -hmm. I think we ran through most of the stuff, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, we... Uh, if you guys want, we could try to do some hand combos for you guys. You could just leave that in the description and ask if you guys want to see videos of that. We could just do that on Dev Pro. And uh, but thank you guys for watching.